I want to share something that today is the day that the Jewish people finish the Gemara Sota. And the Gemara says a number of prophecies of the end of days. Today, today's page of Gemara is filled with the prophecies of now. So I want you to tell me if you think these things are happening. So what is the end of days uh, referred to? 6,000 years after creation. So the 6,000 years, that's the end. <coughs> At that point, Mashiach has to come. But the lead up to that time. Is that a consensus? Yes. It's a consensus. Amongst all Rebbeim? Amongst all Rebbeim. Yeah, the Gemara Paskins, that this world is 6,000 years, and then 1,000 years of Shabbat. And after that 1,000 years begins the times, what's called the world to come. Where is that in the Gemara? The Gemara in Sanhedrin. And Rosh Hashanah also. El of Shonam Kiyoim Echad. That a thousand years is like one day to Hashem. So a thousand years, meaning that one day of the week is like a thousand years. So the first thousand years of creation was like the Sunday of creation. The second thousand years is the Monday and continuing forth. So which day in creation are we up to if we're in the year 5783? Friday. Friday afternoon, my friend. We're 78.3% finished Friday. Do we have to be down to 6,000 or can we come before? Before. You can come any time before. So it's a, that's what I'm saying, Ben. It's any time, though, before. And you don't want to be, you know, sitting somewhere like sipping a pina colada when it happens or smoking a J. You want to be in the base measures. You want to be right here to be able to march on to, into the temple and greet Mashiach. So the lead up to Mashiach is called Ikvois de Mashiach. The footsteps, where you can already hear, you know, the footsteps. It's like the kids hear the, you know, the teacher's footsteps and they put away all this stuff and grab the whoopee, whoopee cushion, throw on it. Nothing's happening here. You know the teacher's coming. So the footsteps of Mashiach means you could hear the footsteps. That's one pshat. Ikvois means the end, the akiv. Like the end of your body, your heel, is called your akiv. So the beginning of time was like the head. Adam Harishon, the beginning, the great beginning of humanity was the head. Moving through the timeline of humanity of King David, he's the heart. All the way till the end, the footsteps, the final bottom of the foot, athlete's foot, toe jam, at the bottom, that's us. Yeah. That's why the earlier generations were much more alive with Hashem. The end of days generations need a lot more uh, fire to get going. We're very numb. We're very numb to godly energy. Okay? So we are in the ikvas of the Mashiach, or in the end of days. The akiv. Also, another understanding is that whose name is Akiv? Anybody know? Yaakov. Yaakov. Because when Yaakov was born, who was born first? Esav or Yaakov? It's sort of a trick question. So Esav is born first. So shouldn't he get the birthright as the firstborn? If you're born first, you get the birthright, right? So, you want to hear what Rashi says? Yeah. You're going to like this. So Yaakov said, I really deserve the birthright. What do you mean? But Esau was born first. You're twin. Esau was born first, so why would you get the birthright? That's why he was holding on to Esau's heel. He was saying that it belongs to me. I, we'll, we'll see in a second what that means. So Esau said, I was born first. And Yaakov says, no, you weren't. What do you mean? I was born first. So Rashi gives an analogy of a tube, a thin tube, a shveiferis. And if you take this thin tube that's large enough to fit, the diameter of the tube is large enough to fit the exact size of a marble. And you put one marble into the tube, and then you put a second marble into the tube. And then you take the tube and you pour the tube out. You pour the contents out. Which marble will come out first? The first one that was put in or the second one that was put in? The second one that was put in. 
So the first one that was put in was really the first one that was the first born, the first conceived. The second one that comes out is really the first one that was put in. The first one that comes out was the second one that was put in. So Yaakovina said, I know Esav, it looks like you're the first. But I'm really the first, the spiritual first. And that's why one of the other meanings of, of Yaakov's name being Yaakov is that Esav took this world, we know. Is that factual? Yeah. Is that how it actually works? So that's the way that Rashi describes it in the womb. Uh-huh. It's like all the twins that are like, oh, I'm 34 seconds older than you. They're like, oh, you're not, though. So I'm, if you, according to Rashi, it would appear that that's what's happening, which is kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Even though we do get preference, let's say you have, uh, for here's an example. If you do a bris milah, so you have two twins. So which of the two babies? I had a, a bris recently of twins, two boys. So which one of the boys gets his bris first? We apply yeah. this rule today. And you know who gets his bris first? Mm. It's, an, it's an honor to have your bris first because you have the foreskin is on, you get it off quicker. So who, should you, who gets it first? So the honor is given to the one that's born first. I so the other one's going to be saying, ah, but I was the one that was conceived first. So to that we say that, yeah, but he's born into this world. We have to... We have to make halacha and Jewish law according to this world. So now, back to Yaakov and Esav. Yaakov takes the world to come. Yaakov has dominion on eternal life. Esav runs this world, in case you haven't noticed. Esav runs this world. That's why a lot of, sadly, people that are not necessarily so into God... And, and, and bringing God into the world have very big positions of power. That's the world of Esav. And they've, they're like the biggest influencers and they're talking about nothing. And they have gazillions of people interested in them. And then people that are talking about God seem to be not with the best PR. Except in the end of days, in the Akiv, at the final stage, Yaakov, that's what he means, he's holding on to the heel. Yaakov will once again become great. Okay, that's the end of days. So, you want to hear the prophecies? This is today's death. Be'ikfois Meshicha, at the end of this long exile, my friends, right before Mashiach comes. Prophecy number one. You ready? Chutzpah Yaske. Chutzpah. It's a very hard word to translate. Chutzpah means? Chutzpah. Balls. Okay, something like that. Yes, we, we say you call it Beitzim. Um, so, what is chutzpah? Audacity. Ada- yeah, but it's like even like sh- worse, sharper. Disrespect. Dis- yeah, disrespect's pretty good. Yes, disrespect is going to fill the world. People are going to be extremely disrespectful. You don't know me, ma! You ever had uh, that we have so much disrespect from children to their parents? Has there ever been such a time like this? When were these prophecies made? This, was, this is all passed down from Mount Sinai, which was 3,334 years ago. So you tell me if you think some of these things are happening right now. And we have an unbroken tradition from the time of the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai until this very day, and I'm now passing it down to you, and you're going to pass it down to your children. Bezrat Hashem, in the right time. Healthy children. Bezrat Hashem. So the end of days will be categorized by absolute chutzpah. People being just chutzpah. You tell me if this is also chutzpah. Sometimes people share with me, like, uh, we call them pulse vids. And like, what's the pulse of what's going on in the world? It's a way to just kind of stay up to date, certain intel on what's happening. So I'm going to show me something like, literally a guy, sometimes a girl, in a CVS, just just <coughs> taking, just shoplifting, in, in, the, in just the day, just, just putting stuff like in a bag, and just walking out. 
Like as if there's like nothing to be embarrassed about. And people just like put their phones like, you know, uh, should we call 911? I don't know. Like he is just stealing everything and nobody's doing anything. It's just chutzpah. What are you stealing? You're not even embarrassed? It's chutzpah. You can't steal. The chutzpah of cursing off the people. Excuse my language. Chutzpah. Anybody notice that chutzpah is at an all-time high? Chutzpah yaske. Chutzpah yaske. Yeah. What's the meaning of chutzpah? I don't know. Pardon? The chutzpah meaning. I don't know. The it's meaning. negative connotation, huh? Yeah. Chutzpah means like total disrespect. Wow. Like talking... <coughs> that, that somebody of respect would say something. Let me give an example. You know, when great and, and holy people would, let's say, let's use an example. The Jewish people have always valued, and we value to this very day, sages of Torah. Great, great holy people. If, if, if Reb Chaim Kanievsky, is that sound, would walk into this room, we would, you know, like, stand up. If it was somebody of Sardi, Tzadik, We'd come, the Baba Sally walked into this room, I probably would faint of the Kiddushah, but we would go and be kissing his hand, like this is a, these people are, like, you know, person, angel, they work their whole life on perfecting themselves. These are people of respect, of stature. And it's interesting that even as the generations went on, even people that were not always so affiliated as religious knew that when, when, a, when a religious person, you know, of stature walks in, you show respect. Nowadays, though, you could have great people walk in, the guy sitting there like on his phone, you know, you know whatever. Yeah. It's a chutzpah. What do you mean? Like, this is a great and no, yeah, what does he know? You know, that type. That's all chutzpah. Chutzpah yaske. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame that... But this is going to be a characterization of the end of days. Chutzpah yaske. It's going to be a huge increase of chutzpah. I see it a lot with kids and their parents. I see it a lot just in the way that people talk. Just chutzpah. In the lack of values and yeah. manners. Yeah, ma ma for, yeah, chutzpah relates to manners also. It's going to be a lot of chutzpah. In the world. Chutzpah yeah. For the chutzpah that they're speaking in the times of Gemara, chutzpah coming up from a place of, you know, like good consciousness or like a place from hurt, a place from pain. Like the chutzpah that we see nowadays it doesn't come from somebody who's healthy, it comes from a place of, of pain. No? Yeah. Is that the chutzpah they're speaking about? So it means well, both chutzpah. We're going to have people that have whole, that, there's something called holy chutzpah. Holy chutzpah means when you, you have to take a risk sometimes to do something a bit crazy. Holy chutzpah sometimes could be, like I had a certain bit of, I would, I would call it holy chutzpah, that there's a Rebbe in the mirror, a, like, a very big person. And uh, I just decided like I was going to go and ask him to learn just with me, privately. Now he doesn't have time for that, and he, but I just felt like that's how sometimes you get stuff done in the world. Like go in, have the chutzpah, get the job done. It's a bit inappropriate to do it. But I was trying to do it for something holy. This person who's just like mouthing off to his parent, that's not a holy chutzpah. So on both sides, we have unholy chutzpah that's increasing because there's such brokenness in the world. So brokenness leads to just, just this chutzpah, like I don't care about anything. I'll say anything to anybody. I'll be as disrespectful as possible. I don't owe anything to anybody. That's such chutzpah, that, that type. I don't owe you anything. That type of like attitude is chutzpah. But on the other side, you have people that are taking the initiative of holy chutzpah. And they're pushing and they're, they're doing things that would have been a bit outside the box because they know they want something big. So prophecy number one of the end of days, and you tell me if you feel this is happening now, chutzpah yaske. There's going to be this huge increase of chutzpah in the world. Number two, the Yoiker Yamir, inflation. 
Everything's going to get expensive. Foods are going to get expensive. Anybody been to the grocery store recently? Have you noticed like your grocery bear is like different? You notice that? Yes. It was up like 60% in the last year. It's insane. It's, it's a bit crazy. It's something, where is it, hovering around 2% a month in certain places? Hopefully, even I've never been in Argentina. Or Venezuela. That, so... Mashiach came to Argentina 20 years ago. What's that? Mashiach came to Argentina 20 years ago. You can't... But here, here the time of Yoik or Yamir means like it's going to be this global inflation. Yeah. Now I think it's the first time. We had it in Germany, right? World War I Germany. United States just... We had Z Zimbabwe. We've had it in, in Venezuela. Yeah. But now it seems to be, it, it's America. like a systemic UK. inflation. <laughs> the UK, that's right. People can't afford. People have to decide between heating their house and eating bread. On, but on more systemic global level. So the Gemara, so I don't know, I'm not the master historian, but in my, in my historical research, I've not seen that there was global famines like this. I mean, it's not, not famine, global inflation happening systemically around the entire world. Everything was going up. The Torah says when that starts happening, that is a sign that we, we are dealing with, uh, and everyone's raising the prices. That's what it means. Yoker Hamachia. Everyone's raising the prices. They raise the prices of everything. So interesting is that economic aspect. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, we're just beginning. We're just beginning. Yeah, the Torah knows everything. So the Torah is, is giving you very clear signs that this is also in the ikvas of the Mashiach. This is right before Mashiach comes. And these will be the signs that we're dealing with, with the messianic, messianic unfolding. Now it's interesting also, Rashi points out that yoiker means also something heavy. Okay? So he says that another interpretation of these words, yoiker yamir, is that we're going to have a problem that people are not going to be, if yoke means covered, honor, heavy, people are not going to have this honor for each other. And in fact, the people that are generally the more honorable people also won't have this honor for other people. I mean, we're going to start to see a destabilization of society, even from the more uh, uh, honorable class of people which had seemingly been more honorable, and now starts to degenerate, even from that echelon. So we're dealing with uh, a major uh, inflation. Prophecy number three, really an offshoot of prophecy number two, Hagefen Titen Pirya, that There'll still be crops. It's an interesting one. There'll still be crops. And specifically here we're talking about the grapes. There'll still be grapes producing, or wine, which is certain, let's call it uh, basic items for us, having wine, having grape juice, grape product is a basic thing. But the yain will be the Meaning, there'll be enough grapes, but everything's going to get expensive. All the, all the wine's going to be expensive. So it sounds like there's one level <coughs> that they're going to have enough stuff to go around. And they're producing a lot of food. There is seemingly food. But things are just getting more expensive. Meaning, you might have said there's inflation because the supply went down. So the extension of that, it seems that we have food. It seems that, you know, you can make, you have fields of crops. But somehow, everything is expensive. Which is fascinating. Super bad management. Or yeah. Or, or something, is, something, something weird is happening here. Greed, waste. Yeah, wh what's going on here? One level of this, which is interesting, 
just specifically pointing out the, why the wine part here is that, who brings this down? Yeah, Rashi points this out, is that why wine? Because there's going to be so many alcoholics. There's going to be so many people drinking, so they're going to be able to raise the prices. And people are going to be jonesing, just, I'll pay anything. I'll pay anything. But it's a fascinating thing that you have supply, but somehow the prices are still high. That's not usually how economics work. Okay, so we went through three of the prophecies. There's a whole bunch more. Oh, it goes on. I'll let you guys think if you feel this is what's happening right now, my dear friends. Absolutely. We're mamish getting super, super close. This is today's daf of daf yoimi. Soita. Sota is an amazing Gemara. If people want to jump into a Gemara of learning some amazing Talmud, Sota is like up there. It also kind of like sets you straight of the way to act and to be careful about sanctity of relationships. And Bezrat Hashem, we should become pure people and we should spread the, the spirit of purity through the whole world. And Bezrat Hashem with that, See the third base. I make this from here. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Call to. Bezrat Hashem.